Hey guys, today we are throwing a magical unicorn party and making fun, bright, and colorful sweet treats. There's unicorn horn pretzels, marble candy apples, homemade lollipops, cake pops, and cupcakes. The tutorial for this awesome cake will be in my next video, so be on the lookout for that. But for now, let's bring these fun treats to life and be sure to keep on watching! The first treat we're going to make are these rainbow marble candy apples. To get the apples ready, we need to boil them in some water for about 10 seconds. This step preps the apples by removing the wax from the skin, which will allow the candy to stick and prevents air bubbles. I always do this for candy apples, but not for chocolate covered apples. Give the apples a thorough dry and allow them to set for 48 hours. I'm warning you, they won't look too pretty because a lot of the sap is going to come out of the pores. That means they are ready and after those 48 hours, you can go ahead and insert the sticks into the center of the core so they are firmly secured in place. Now let's get to the fun part. In a heavy bottom pot, I'm gradually pouring four cups of sugar in there, making sure not to get the sugar around the edges, and adding in one cup of water with one cup of corn syrup. Bring this mixture to medium heat until it reaches 300 degrees. Do not be tempted to stir it at all, otherwise it may crystallize. Just monitor with a candy thermometer and remove from the heat at that 300 degree mark. Next, I'm stirring in two tablespoons of white gel food coloring to act as a base for our beautiful marble design. You can get creative and use any shades of food coloring that you like. All you need to do for the method is scatter assorted drafts of each color. I use a combination of neon gel colors in pink, purple, blue, and yellow for a unicorn inspired theme. Then drag the skewer through all the colors and how cool does that look? You don't have to worry about adding too much color because once you swirl the apple around, it will have the perfect amount of white for a marble effect. In fact, after dipping about three of your apples, you may need to add more drops of the food coloring, but they are just so satisfying and fun to dip. The key to successful apples is to angle your pot so the candy pulls up in the corner and swirl the apple around until completely covered, then lightly shake the excess off. I wanted to advise you that these apples break down, so if you are making these for a party or an order, they should be dipped as close as possible to the time of the event. Now we are all finished with our candy apples and the perfect snack to go along with those are the unicorn horn pretzels. They are wrapped in caramel and chocolate and are so easy and delicious you will definitely love these. We are going to start by unwrapping four of the caramel squares and microwave them for 20 seconds. The caramel should be warm to touch but not quite melted and easy to squish together to mold into a log shape. Once it is smooth and has no lines, I'm continuously rolling it into a rope that is about one to two inches longer than the pretzel rod and wrapping it around the pretzel to resemble a unicorn horn. And guys, I wanted to welcome my new viewers recently. It's so great to have you here. So make sure you join the party and subscribe for new fun recipes and tutorials every week. After all the unicorn horns are wrapped, I'm taking Birkin's white chocolate melt and an oil-based candy coloring. Here I have color mill in the shades Tiffany, purple, and candy. I recommend to dip the horns into a tall cup to thoroughly coat the leaf of the pretzel rod and shake the excess back into the cup. And it's time to drizzle on a little bit of each color while the white chocolate is still wet. That way when we tap the pretzels, it blends seamlessly into the other colors. Just be careful and tap gently so your pretzel doesn't break. 
My tips and tricks are to work quickly and keep an eye on your chocolate. If it starts getting too thick, you can always microwave for an additional five more seconds to keep it at a smooth consistency. Our unicorn horns are looking so cute. For the next sweet treat, we are making our own fabulous homemade lollipops that can be decorated with your favorite sprinkles and decorations. They are very similar to preparing the candy apples, except they don't require any food coloring, just a lollipop mold and sprinkles. Place your candy thermometer in the pot, but don't let it touch the bottom like I did, okay? And pour in half of a cup of water, two cups of sugar, and one cup of corn syrup. Keep in mind to stay away from the edges to prevent crystallizing and avoid stirring the mixture. It is best to keep it on medium heat and allow it to come to 300 degrees slow and steady. Also, I want to mention that I did show a silicone mold before, but after testing it out, I prefer a plastic hard candy mold. It holds the shape of the candy much better. Next, you want to spray the mold with non-stick and have everything ready to go before the candy comes to temperature, such as the sticks inside the mold your favorite sprinkles, edible glitter, and choice of flavorings. I will be sure to link everything in the description box below. After the candy has come to 300 degrees, it was removed from the heat, and I'm mixing in one teaspoon of strawberry flavoring. To make the pouring process easier, I transferred the candy into a silicone measuring cup. It is flexible and so convenient to pour. The first two I filled halfway, and the rest of the lollipops I filled completely to achieve a different design. The ones that are filled halfway need to set until they are firm, and you can sprinkle in your sanding sugar. That way, the weight of the sugar doesn't disturb the candy, and you have the look of a clear lollipop with the pretty sprinkles on the inside. For the other design, I arranged the Wilton Unicorn Sprinkle Mix on top of the lollipop. They will stick right on, and at the end, you could go back and pour the other half of the candy into the mold to cover over the sanding sugar. The the most important part is to cover over the sticks with enough candy to ensure there are no gaps. You are good to remove them from the mold once the candy has completely hardened, which usually takes 20 minutes. I did leave a clear lollipop plane to decorate with tinker dust. This is an edible glitter that is FDA approved. Not all glitters are, most of them are only non-toxic. I do recommend this brand for your customers and family to feel most comfortable. Last, I attach star sprinkles right on top of the glitter. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make your own lollipops. For treat number four, we're making unicorn cake pops because no dessert table is complete without them and they are super cute. If you haven't seen my method of preparing cake pops from my other videos, I use Pillsbury cake mix and a cake pop maker. It yields enough batter for 36 cake pops super fast just by following the instructions from the back of the box. I'm combining the cake mix with three whole eggs, one cup of water, and half of a cup of oil, and giving it a mix. Once I tried using this technique, I never went back, so you definitely should give it a try if you struggle with cake pops. My machine is the Baby Cakes Cake Pop Maker. You can make 12 in each batch, which will be three batches for a total of 36. First, I spray my plates with non-stick while the machine is still off and fill each well to the rim with the cake batter. Don't worry about slightly overfilling them, the end result will create a dense and full cake pop and once we trim off the extra scraps, they will all be the same size. After plugging in the machine, just wait 4 minutes and you have cake pops that are perfectly smooth for dipping. Before we get dipping and decorating, I trim the scraps off the edges with kitchen shears and after they are cooled down, I will show you all of my tips and tricks to prevent them from falling off the stick and how to achieve a nice dip. 
First things first, your chocolate needs to be a smooth and fluid consistency that falls right off of your spoon, not clumpy or gluey. I always use Merkins, and I'm taking my lollipop stick and dipping it into a small amount of chocolate, just enough to act as a glue, and you could push the stick into the center of the cake pop as far as it goes without making a hole in the cake. I always wait at least 15 minutes after inserting all the sticks to let the chocolate completely attach to the cake. My favorite way to dip is to put the chocolate into a mug or cup and angle it instead of dipping straight in. That way the chocolate doesn't suction the cake in there. I'm so excited to transform these plain cake pops into a unicorn after they have dried. I drew on the eyelashes with a non-toxic pencil as a guide, but it is completely optional, and I went over the lines with a black edible marker. All the unicorns have their cute little lashes, so let's bring everything together with a flower crown and horns. Of course you can purchase pre-made sugar decorations, but I chose to hand make my own with these awesome molds. All I did was roll gold shimmer fountain into a ball and put a dash of cornstarch into the horn impression to prevent sticking, then press the fondant on top, and there you have your horn. To finish it off, I cut around the edges with a knife, and I did this the same exact way for the ears with the gold shimmer fondant again. They are super tiny, but the mold makes this very simple. Next for the flowers, I made them with pink and turquoise fondant, and also I combined the purple with a pearl shimmer fondant for some extra sparkle, and pressed that into the rose impression. I was a little worried about these molds when I looked at the reviews, but I give them a thumbs up, so I will be sure to link them in the description box as well. Once you have all your pieces cut out, you can choose to brush on a silver edible luster dust to take the details to the next level and make everything more eye-catching. When in doubt, add more glitter, right? Attaching everything on is easier than you think. I dab a small amount of white chocolate on the crown of the head and hold the horn in place for about 15 seconds and continue by arranging the ears on each side and the pretty flower crown to complete the look. The gold fondant already has some shimmer in it, but you can intensify the gold finish by brushing edible paint onto the horns and ears. Just remember to use a light touch so they don't break. I really love how these came out. For the remaining cake pops, I made simple designs with colored chocolate that I dyed with the color mill in the pink purple and blue and top them with a rainbow sanding sugar. You can sprinkle the sanding sugar on while the chocolate is still wet, but I prefer to let them dry and apply it with a dab and hold. It's an edible adhesive that you brush on exactly where you want your sprinkles or sanding sugar to go and you can take your time which is a plus. I also love using it to coat the cake pops entirely in sanding sugar for a sparkly look. Keep in mind less is more and it is better to spread a small amount around and rub it in with the brush rather than applying layers and layers of it because the sanding sugar can appear clumpy. It looks so beautiful with just the right amount of adhesive. Last but not least, for our Unicorn Swirled Cupcakes, we can't forget those, I baked my vanilla cupcake recipe and made a batch of Italian meringue buttercream. It's the best frosting ever without being too sweet. And if you are making your cupcakes from the box, this frosting takes them to the next level and makes them taste like they came from a bakery. I divided mine up into three bowls and dyed them with gel food coloring. For this trick, I loaded each color into a pastry bag and piped them on a sheet of plastic wrap into a long tube shape. I alternated the colors into this pattern and wrapped the plastic up like a burrito, making sure to twist the ends tight and snip off the bottom end. You can place that burrito into a pastry bag fitted with a 1M decorating tip for a colorful swirl. But before we pipe onto our cupcakes, I have these adorable unicorn cupcake wrappers I found on Amazon. I assembled them by joining the end with the slot and dropped the cupcake right in. We are all ready to pipe our colorful swirls. I squeeze the bag as I work my way around in a counterclockwise motion and lift off to close the opening in the middle. 
Of course, I had to dress up our unicorns by shaking some disco dust on top of the swirls. And these aren't unicorn cupcakes without the horns and ears. This is the Wilton Unicorn Decorating Kit. And in seconds, the cupcakes magically had their horns and ears on. I hope you enjoyed making these magical treats with me and they brightened your day. You really have to try them at home. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.